The Memphis Grizzlies also drafted one of the most polarizing players in this year's draft class and Zach Eady. He was a guy who some thought probably shouldn't go in the first round, but he ended up going number nine. And obviously his stock kind of rose after the Purdue's um, tournament run, but even then there were still a lot of mixed emotions about him. Um, and I know here at League Band, we haven't always been the biggest Zach Eady fans, but what are your guys' thoughts on um, the Grizzlies selection? I, I'm not a fan of it, uh, to be frank. Unless he showed Memphis some more shooting ability uh, and more agility in their workouts than we've seen in four years of college basketball, where Purdue's playing deep into the postseason. I mean, that you know exactly what Zach Eady has done over the last four years. He's played deep into seasons. He's been. Vir- virtually in every single game. I don't think he's really had any injury uh, problems at this point. Y- he's just a giant center that can sometimes turn around and hook, uh, rebound the ball, be be a tough screener because that's such a massive body to, to try to get around. But I feel like at pick number nine to take a guy that I think has he even attempted a single three in a game in, in college, like – that seems like such a high that seems like such a a high price to pay for a center that you know we've talked about some of these other guys that are you know the potential might be there for their shooting ability if they start to work on it this is a center that literally did not shoot in in college so uh i i am not a fan of this pick like he can't shoot it He's like slow, so he can't switch. He's definitely someone they're gonna have to use in drop coverage. I mean, I see potential ways for like the Grizzlies to use him as like a interesting like change of pace off the bench big for like a couple minutes a night. I don't know. I'm just concerned a lot about he's. I think so. I have to like double check this, but I heard. There was a stat that I saw yesterday where he scored literally no transition points last year, like zero. And the Grizzlies, when they have John Morant healthy, are one of the fastest teams in the league. Like they are transition, lobs thrown, out running, everybody on the break. Edie, like, he just doesn't fit to me. Like he's not... Like, even with, like, his improved mobility, like, he's still probably miles behind where he would need to be to, like, run with the Grizzlies in transition. And, like, I've seen some people say, well, they made it work with Steven Adams. But Steven Adams was, like, always a little bit more athletic than I think people realize. Like, he wasn't, like, completely slow and trotting. And he kind of was, like, a vertical lob there at times. So, like, Edie can be that in some sense. I just don't. He's also, like, one of, like, you would think he would have, like, a lot more pick-and-roll points than he has, but he actually wasn't, like, one of the top pick-and-roll scorers in the league either. He was very post-up heavy, yeah. And, like, he's very post-up heavy, and if you look at the NBA stats from, like, the last 10 years, the numbers of post-ups have only gone down. And the amount of players they even allow to have several post-ups per game, like, I think the amount of players with, like, more than two and a half post-ups per game is, like, five or something crazy like that. So, like, I don't know. I don't – okay, I do know. I don't like the pick. Like, I really don't like it. I don't <laughs> – I just don't think he fits really well with Memphis. If it works out, we may be wrong. And, like, if he turns out to have, like, great touch and they want to go back to playing old school post-up basketball for some possessions for him, like – Maybe he's just so different that teams have to adjust to him. Like, there's that possibility, maybe. But honestly, like, I think the most likely outcome is that he's never more than a backup big for Memphis. And, like, I don't know. I just wouldn't take a player at nine who's, I think, his best ability for my team would be setting screens for John Morant. Like, yes, he's going to be a really good screen setter. No, I don't think that's enough pick that not. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, I'm kind of I have mixed emotions about it because I feel like 
of all the teams that would select Edie, I feel like it makes sense that Memphis kind of did it. But at the same time, like when you have the ninth pick, I'm just not sure if Edie's someone you want to draft that high, especially considering coming in, I don't think he's going to be a starter, um, even if he can somehow turn into that. Um, it just feels like you kind of mentioned the transition points, and that's kind of something that I think is a big question mark for me. And it's like he's just kind of a big body, and I just don't – it does kind of – it kind of contradicts what Ja Morant does. And obviously your team's going to take the identity of your best player. But at the same time, um, it's it's easy to make comparisons to Steven Adams and what he did. But I don't know. It's just, it's still kind of, I feel like you kind of have to like do mental gymnastics to make it fully make sense. But I think I can understand the fit or I like it a little bit more than some other people I just think they're gonna have to I'm also kind of curious what they're gonna do outside of Edie because I don't think he should be your solution as a big man like I, I still think free agency they need to go out and try to get somebody I'm not entirely sure who all's out in the big market but I uh, if I was them I would like them to get Jonas I think Jonas bringing him back would be a good fit for them yeah, and that's a good point because he's obviously got the rapport with some of those guys. But I I don't know. I, it's one of those things where I just want to see Edie play, see how he looks. I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt because I don't want to be one of those guys who's just like, oh, he, he can't make it in the league. He has no spot. But obviously he's a slower big and he's taller too so, and he doesn't move as fast. So it's just... It's natural to kind of think that, but I, I do, I just think about what Steven Adams did, and I think it's possible that he could maybe fill some of those roles, but even then, Steven Adams made that team better, but I don't think, with him on the floor, I don't know if he necessarily made them a championship type of team, if that makes sense. Like, I don't think he was their, their piece that was going to make them, cut that last part out. I, I was gonna No, 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 keep going. No, no, you're good. Um, you can kind of cut it with this. So, like, yeah, I agree. Like, he um, – I think at times, especially, like, down the stretch of, like, really competitive games, like, there was times where, like, Steven – they couldn't play Steven Adams. Like, some of their best lineups were with Jaron Jackson at the center. So, like, I agree. Like, he just – like, even if he is Steven Adams, like, we kind of just saw – like, there's a reason they traded him. Like, yeah, he was hurt, but – he also, like, couldn't stay on the floor for them all the time. So, like, I just don't see how if they could see, scheme a more athletic, faster, probably a little bit stronger big, like Steven Adams out of games, like, I don't see how they think other teams won't be able to get Edie off the court. Do you guys think, like, he could be, like... <laughs> so, when comparing mobility as big... Do we think he's, like, more or less mobile than, like, an Avika Zubak for the Clippers? The Combine, they said he – didn't they say he had, like, pretty decent mobility? But even they then, I'm still, like – he just doesn't look like he's moving that fast. Maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe Memphis will will show us a bit of athleticism that he just hadn't tapped into. But to me – he feels like he moves the same, if not slower, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, like, the Clippers are, like, when you watch their games, like, Ty Lue is stubborn. So, like, he's, like, he has this whole thing where we're going to make you adjust to what we do instead of we're not going to adjust to what you do. So, like, he'll keep him out there, like, even when it's kind of, like, clear he shouldn't be. But I think any other coach, like, if Vika Zubak would be kind of play out of a lot of games just because of how slow he is laterally how he can, like, gets taken advantage of on a defensive end. And, like, Edie's, like, in all likelihood, bigger and slower. So, like, if he's, like, if the combine numbers are real and he is able to transfer that onto the court and he moves, like, at a pace that's similar to, like, Donovan Klingon, then maybe I do like to pick a little more. But I don't know. Like, it'll be interesting to see, like, was he really, like, that, like, was Matt Painter holding him back and, like, restricting what he looked like? Or is he, like, really just this slow, 
seven foot five big that we all know probably shouldn't have been taken in the top ten. I, I can understand picking him, but just picking him nine seems very, very high for what he projects to be. But we'll see what Memphis can cook up with him. Like, who are they bidding against? Like, who's going to take Edie at, like, 12 or something like that? Like, they couldn't have found, like, a trade-down partner, I feel like. I don't, I don't yeah. know why they, And they were – and what's interesting bold. about Memphis, too, is they were even trying to trade up for Klingon. So – I don't. I don't think Edie's a totally bad move if you're if bad move if you're trying to go big. But to see them go from Klingon to just settling for Edie, it's you got to do what you got to do. Like would Khalil Ware not have been like a way better fit with Memphis? Like someone who's mobile can shoot threes. So like it also gives John more space and is like a lob threat. Like would that not have been yeah. a ten times better fit than Edie? I don't know. Plus, too, like, you have a, a good defender in Jaron Jackson, so it's like, you could maybe, I don't know. I To me, my mindset is kind of like, Jackson can kind of teach Ware to be a, you know, a better defender if you're not sold on the, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm still trying to like, I'm not trying to like completely tr- trash on the pick because when it first happened, I kind of understood it, but now it's like, it's still kind it of really, it really does feel like they just like went to like they just had a spreadsheet of like big men. It was like, oh, this one's gone. Okay, the next talk like they just went to the tallest one. Like, oh, this one. A summer league is gonna be fun though, because I feel like actually getting to see these prospects in the NBA setting will be specifically a guy like Edie, and that's gonna be fun. Oh, he's gonna cook the summer league. He's like college. Like it's <laughs> Like, he doesn't have, like, my thing is, like, what happens when, like, John Morant gets a rebound and gets out on the break? Like, how long are they going to have to wait for E.V. to get back? Like, is he going to be able to keep up with everyone, or is he going to be, like, costing them three to four seconds every possession? I still think you might see that set? see that in Summer League, though, because Summer League, like, as much as I love it, it'd be a mess sometimes, and they just be running oh, up yeah, and down it's bad. With, no, with no idea what they're trying to do. So I think I think you might see that to an extent a little bit, because it's really just, let me just show Summer I can football. Yeah. 